Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to our pitching competition um, session. My name is Ima, and I'll be moderating your event for today. Alongside me is Faris. Faris will be uh, looking out to time keep um, for your presentation. Here, teams, we are proud to present to you two of our most distinguished guests, um, and also our judges as well. Firstly, Mr. John Lim. Mr. John Lim is the Director for International Affairs, and he's also the Cal Fellow for the Harvard Asia Center as well as Professor Ruben Clements. Professor Ruben Clements is the Associate Dean of Research from the School of Medical and Life Sciences from Sunway University. Um, before your, uh, basically before group two start, before you start your presentation, please take note of a um, few of these details. Firstly, for the first 10 minutes, you would have to start your press conference. The next five minutes will be allocated for the Q&A session. Um, in between judges and participants. And for your final five minutes will be allocated for judges' deliberation and the results will be passed individually. Without further ado, I'd like to invite group two representatives to start your presentation. All the best. All right, are we good to go now? All right, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Brad Ong Yang Chief Executive Officer at Speed Care Airlines. Recently, we have faced several issues around discrimination, human resources, and job security. Before talking about the steps we take to address them, I want to talk about how we got here. Speed Care Airlines is an idealistic and optimistic company. We focus on connecting people from all around the world through our services. At Speed Care Airlines, our top priority has always been the people. And without a doubt, that includes our employees too. Without hesitation, I would say that our company is fully against any form of discrimination and mishandling of human resources. It is also our company's responsibility to ensure job security for our employees. I am deeply sorry for what happened to one of our employees. We didn't take a broader view of our responsibility. I would like to apologize and take full responsibility for what happened. We did not meet the standard of excellence that you expect and deserve. I want to start by shining some light on the incident and why the management team decided to lay off one of our employees recently. Firstly, the safety of employees has always been our top priority in this company. It involves a lot of complexities when it comes to providing safe environment for pregnant women especially for us students who travel a lot and scenarios can happen on any airplane. Very sadly, at the present moment, our company is not yet well equipped to handle in air birth or any pregnancy-related complications. And that is why we have a policy in place that states that as students who become pregnant cannot serve while they are in the airlines to ensure their safety. Secondly, our employee conceal her pregnancy and breach the contract of agreement. It is prohibited to become pregnant during the duration of the contract, and she should be well aware of the terms and conditions as it was stated clearly in the contract of agreement. However, our management didn't professionally handle this incident, and we didn't look further into this issue and discuss it further with the employee involved. It is our fault that this incident has happened in such a way, and this is actually an incident that can be avoided. If we approached her and resolved the problem, and upon her request, we decided to disclose our negotiation privately. However, this does not stop here. I assure this shall not happen again, and we will take concrete actions to address these issues. We define our problem statement as our company's failure to commit to promoting gender equality in the workplace. And this is manifested through three key issues, namely having a discriminatory policy towards women, failing to provide our female employees the assurance of job security, and lastly, not listening enough to our employees' concerns. At first glimpse, it is safe to assume that these issues implicate women only. However, we subscribe to the idea that this issue will implicate all of our people as everyone is connected in the organization, regardless of their profile. 
at Speaker Airline, we believe these issues must be addressed immediately because our employees are our most important assets. All of the issues could have negative ramifications on our employees' morale and create a negative experience in the workplace. In the long run, this will affect our company's sustainable success. Having said all of that, in the next part of the presentation, we'll have our Chief Human Resource Officer, Eileen, to explain to you our company's way of addressing the problem statement through our approaches. Thank you, Brian. And as mentioned that Speed Care Airlines, we do prioritize the safety and welfare of employees. We do believe the issues and the policies and discrimination to be addressed, especially when we are setting an example of a sustainable practice. Therefore, we have formul formulated new approaches after discussion with our board of directors, consultants, and senior management to improve the work conditions and the internal operations. So one of our solutions including to ensure job security, where we decided to revise our company's policy, focusing on special maternity benefits and as well for the pregnant employee. Implementing maternity leave up to 90 days with benefits and for all female staff of continuous service with Speed Care Airlines. We support employees and their family in one of the most important times in life, especially the birth of a child. We do encourage our female employees who are actually on maternity leave to maintain an open communication with the management about resuming their return to work to allow our HR for planning and arrangement. At the same time, we would like to carry out a two year voluntary trial run in partnership with our selective airports for pregnant staff in offering a temporary transfer to a different department that is a pregnancy friendly workplace. The initiatives include providing the necessary support and training that we can cater directly to pregnant employees for them to adapt new roles and different environments on the ground level to ensure a healthy pregnancy while continuing to make valuable contributions to the operations. And that would ensure their job security. And our second solution is to maintain good faith and effectiveness of the operations. We will be conducting an efficient annual report by our independent auditor and monitoring all policies towards the interest of the sustainability of speed care airlines, including the employee operations and well-being. The procedures involve reviewing policies and ensuring the law and regulations are up to date for good practice. Recommendations and overall reports from the auditor would strengthen the information of the policy policies in recognizing speed care airlines sustainability impacts that aligns with one of our visions in the best interest of employees in creating an inspiring workplace. And we move on to the third solution is to ensure a safe workplace where we'll be restructuring the internal operations starting from the HR management, where we aim to provide a safe platform for employees coming from both air and ground levels where they are able to lodge their complaints and concerns without feeling neglected. The process should be fair, accessible and transparent that can be taken as an effective way of handling issues and employment rights without being friendly, uh, unfairly mistreated or facing any discriminations. All communication is addressed with transparency and is in compliance with our SOPs. And at the end, Issues can be identified and addressed for the improvement of our company and ensure inclusivity of the employees are able to work in a safe and conducive environment. And our last solution is to encourage empathetic leadership in the workplace. We have reallocated our financial budgets to implement more training and skills development for the HR and management department. The goal is to equip management and senior employees to develop their critical mindsets of that will promote and implement empathetic leadership that thrive in changing business environment in which speed care airlines operates. We believe the importance of incorporating empathy as a key tool into management role to understand the perspective of the employees towards the awareness of their conditions and the thoughts of in the same workplace. 
This would improve critical responding in addressing circumstances and any unexpected situations in the future, such as the recent issue of hiding your pregnancy issues, that we believe that we should be handled with proper care and while maintaining a professional practice. That will bring a strong connections with compassion within one another that will encourage better planning and monitoring of employees' performance and effective communication. And I would like to conclude that our approaches aim to ensure for both, for both women and men as well, working in a safe environment towards the employees' rights that aligns with our company's sustainability approach in the long term. I will pass on to Brian for the closing. Thank you, Eileen. Indeed, it may take some time to implement these changes. Once again, I would like to express my deepest apologies for our dear employees who have affected. We hope to improve our company. Speaker Airlines have come a long way, and we have carried almost 450 million passengers. At Speaker Airlines, we always care for you. We will do our best to ensure our staff are well-fed and employed, even through the hardest time. On behalf of Speaker Airlines, I would like to thank you for always believing in us and supporting us. Although currently we are in a hard time, I thank believe you. we will get over it and come back I'm stronger talking. and fly together. Thank you, Group 2. Thank you, Brian. Um, I will allocate the next five minutes uh, for the Q&A session um, from our judges and uh, participants as well. Cousin Ruben and Mr. John can go ahead. If I may, can I go? Yes, thank yes. Brian. Yes and Eileen for your presentation. Um, really comprehensive and it's good to know that you guys are fully behind your staff and trying to make changes. I just want to ask what has happened to Aina since, it, since then? Right, thank you Rebel for the question. So for Aina cases, actually we have actually consulted to her privately and we have come to the conclusion that yes, we will hire her again. And based on our policy that just now Ali has stated just now, we decided to arrange her to another department, which is based on the slide just now, the two years trial program, and see if this works out for her. We believe that this ensures her, give her the sense of safety, the security, that she won't lose her job. And why, and the reason why she decides to conceal the fact that she's pregnant, the reason is she afraid she is going to lose her job. And we want to solve this issue to the very root of it that is job insecurity. By doing this, we allow her to feel safe and allow her to have the chance to contribute to our company. And I hope this answers your question. Thank you, Brian. I just want to ask for one last question before the contracts are signed, the employees, is there a briefing done? Because there's a lot of fine print in your agreements. Sometimes they may skip that. Do you guys ensure there's a proper briefing done for the your employees before they sign contracts? Thank you, Rula, for the question. Yes, we are sure that we will have a very concise briefing. And I would like to add on further to that. And the reason why we like to give a briefing session is because that in just, let, let me give you an example. If you are, let's say, a Apple product user, usually when you have reading the policy and regulation section, I believe most of us will just skim through it because it's too long and no one even bothered to read it. And we actually come up with a, something similar to that, but we decided to make it much simpler and easier for them to understand without all those buzzwords and hard words to understand. We make it even simple for laymen to understand the, the contract or the rules and regulation when they sign the contract. I hope I answer your question. Thank you, that's all from me. Thank you very much, Ruben. Um, I have a question. Um, sorry if I missed this, but uh, when you say that you apologize, what, what specifically are you sorry for? Right. So actually, I've addressed three issues just now. First is the gender inequality issue. I mean, the main issue is the gender inequality issue because in our policy, our previous policy, we did not consider much about pregnant women. I believe that this is really at our fault for not considering every one of our employees, regardless of race, gender, and all of every kind of matrices. I believe that as a big company, and especially 
a service company that we are doing an airline service, being able to serve everyone is an important mission. And being not able to help out our employees who are pregnant and allow her to continue to service to make contribution is our deepest mistake at first. And wait, can you repeat that again? Sorry. What was your deepest mistake? Our deepest mistake was just now uh, not being able to allow all, sorry, uh, not being inclusive enough when it comes to the benefits or welfare of our employees. Yes. And if I could quickly jump in, Brian, if that's sure, okay. No yeah, in addition to what Brian has mentioned, we are also sorry for the fact that we have ignored some of the voices coming from our employees because we did receive a lot of backlash after we terminated the contract um, with that particular employee and we did not address it properly. We just ignored it. So we're sorry for that. And this is why we have decided to introduce change in policy for today. Mm. Okay. Uh, I think that's all from me. Uh, sorry, I have a question. This is also open for the other participants, right? To act as a yes. press? Okay. Right, do we have any more questions? And once, all right, Q&A time is up. Um, I'm going to locate the five minutes for the judges celebration.
Uh, I'm good to go on my side. Right. Yeah, um, me too. Check. All done. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Well, thank you, Group 2. I'd like to move to um, Group 4. You can start your presentation. Wait, um, let me just share my screen first. Oh, sure. right. Can everybody see my screen? I will take that as a yes. Um, is my CEO ready? About 10 minutes um, starts now. Good morning, everyone. I bid to everyone present today. I, Brandilia, acting as CEO of Speedcare Airlines, would like to be addressing a recently heated issue among company staff, notably the female hair stewardess on the working contract policies. Now, before I dive deeper into this issue, our airlines would like to express our utmost apologies to the affected air stewardess that our airline working policy has not provided her security needs regarding her position in this company. She might have be felt taken aback that her personal affairs had such a huge impact on her career and that we will thoroughly revise our policies so that she, current staff and also future female staff do not have to go through this huge dilemma in the future. My team understands the problem that there is discrimination in the sense of securing a job for women in speed care airlines. Um, and with that, the reason why we are addressing this issue is because we realize that there is a fault in our company contract policies concerning female stewardess that get pregnant during their working duration. We have a collective objective and obligation now to establish a secured working environment for all our staff who have contributed to the functions of Speedcare Airlines. With that, we will answer the statement of to what extent can Speedcare Airlines ensure job positions for pregnant air stewardess. This problem statement will address three key issues. The first and main one would be gender discrimination in the sense of job security. Pregnancy should not be a reason to put one's careers at risk, and we have acknowledged that. Other than that, we will also address the backlash from the female employees, and also we will work together to the proper treatment for women in the company. Now, how will our company policy change? I announce now that we have decided that we will retain all pregnant female air stewardess on their status in the airline compared to the previous policy that dismisses them upon their pregnancy. The policy change will be put into place immediately, starting with the contract of the affected individual, Aina, and then followed by other females of the company that will be able to migrate to the new contract by signing the newly revised contract as soon as it is available by the HR department. On paper, this might seem simple. However, there are several departments that will be affected by this small change, which will be um, elaborated by my chief human resource officer later on. On the question of time, we expect this whole adaptation project to take a maximum one year. Starting with this press statement, we'll take a two years to implement new technology to adapt to working pregnant air flight uh, air stewardess and also the revision of contract, followed by a town hall. Another two months of training of the new technology and rescheduling of in-flight staff and also another two months for the pilot test. In this pilot test, we see if we need to add, remove, or amend anything, followed by a six-month counseling seminar, which is a collaboration program with a woman NGO. And by the end of all this, we should be able to completely migrate to the new system, whereby when the new recruits will come in with a new working environment with the new contract ready at in hand. As for the short term, we would um, talk about three parts, which is the HR, the CTO, and also the CFO. The CH, uh, CHRO would be revising the previous word contract. The CTO would be applying technology advancement to support the journey of pregnant uh, females who are working in our cabin crew. And also the reward and appraisal system for those who opt to work overtime to cover for their female colleagues who would be away during their maternity leave. As for our long-term actions here, we'll have two. The first one being a comp campaign for women NGO on the gender equality on all in our organization. Uh, we want to raise awareness on the empowerment of women, as well as we want to have stress management one-to-one uh, -one session for our, and monitor the progress of our overtime as stewardess who opt to cover for their uh, absent female colleagues. Okay, uh, with that, I will pass to my chief human resource officer to explain into detail of our supporting actions of the finance, operation, human resource, and technical aspects. Thank you. Thank you to my CEO. First, I would like to take your time and glance through the context of our one-year-long implementation to improve our company. Firstly, I will cover up for my financial officer. 
Um, this is just a few disadvantages of external recruitment and hereby we're saying it's time consuming to go and find your employee. That is why we would like to retain our loyal employees and keep AINA in our company. Next is just a short operating costs and expenses that our company bears every year. Okay, this is the slide that I would like you to key take away from. We are showing that um, the lack of employment quality or the employee productivity results in a deterioration of our company's revenue. This is sad to see, but it's true. Um, the poor relationship between the employer and employee affects the motivation as well as the productivity of the employees, which will result in a decrease of profit. And since, because there's no production, the burden of fixed expenses such as maintenance costs and overhaul costs will also be affected. And this is, like, this is why we would like to instead amend our policy and create more inclusivity for the pregnant workers, not only for the betterment of our revenue, but the betterment for all our um, employees in the company. And this is just three budgeting control steps that we would like to take in uh, maintaining this progress. Next is by our operation officers, one and two. They have created a timeline to make sure that all the officers, uh, whether it be CFO, uh, CHRO, or CTO, are always on track and living up to the promise that our company has stated in this one year long, what are we doing to make the um, necessary changes for a better environment, not only for the female workers, but for all genders. And rough and mentioned by my CEO, it will take a one year long. Going to my department, the Human Resources Department, this issue of AINA was addressed two days ago. And yesterday, my legal team has came down to my office. We have sat down with a private session with AINA herself, made a catered amendment to her contract first, saying that we will keep her working in our company. Right after today's uh, press, my team again will, uh, my department, sorry, will sit again with the legal advisory board to hold a town hall to collect feedback and reviews in order to make amendments in the employer contract with removing termination and allowing female workers to work up to the fifth or the sixth month of pregnancy. So starting from the seven, eight, nine month, they'll be having uh, a leave and also additional 90 days, which is mandatory um, advice by doctors right after they give birth. So roughly there will be a six month break. However, due to this, um, the female workers will be facing a pay cut of 60%. So they will only be getting 40% of their normal pay. But why we're minusing the 60% is because we need to pay the bonuses for those employees that are doing overtime or replacing the, female, the pregnant female worker schedule because they would have to do extra time and covering shifts. Now, other than that, uh, another key takeaway that is from my department would be to collaborate a uh, consulting services with a women-led NGO to carry out seminars as well as a uh, guided campaign. The contents of the seminar will cover the effects of discrimination, basic women rights, and the power of women in a workplace. Now, the campaign would be on awareness of gender equality as well as the inclusivity of females in a working environment. What our company would do is that we will make it mandatory for all employees to wear a design badge to uh, addressing this campaign, and there will be posters of successful uh, female leaders from all around the world posted in our offices. Following that, we hope that our employees um, follow, uh, sorry, the key takeaways that we hope our employees learn from the seminar and campaign would be providing a secure job position for female workers, as well as creating a safe space and comfortable working environment for all genders. Going to the uh, CTO department, my chief uh, technical operator, we, uh, he has incorporated the advancement of technology in implementing support for the pregnant workers in their flight journey. As you can see on the slide, we will make it mandatory for all pregnant females to always wear this pregnancy belt when on flight. Besides that, we have also spent some time and create research to design a catered seat to ensure comfortability when taking off and landing for these pregnant females while on their flight journey. This is all from me, the CHRO of uh, Speed Care Alliance. I would like to pass the floor back to my CEO for the closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you for the detailing. So as a wrap, this regretted mistake has become a great eye-opener for Speed Care Airlines on the role of women in the company. As a whole, despite this first step being a small one, it is, will be a great start to a more sustainable and equal working environment for all our staff, regardless of gender. We are confident that with these amendments, we are able to produce a secure, inclusive and healthy working environment for all our staff, which would directly translate to the quality of service and the productivity. Speedcare Airlines hope that all our clients, 
media and stakeholders will stay with us on this learning and adaptation adaptation journey as we work to become the best versions of ourselves and the best airline for you with that we regret all the dissatisfaction of the staff and we thank you all for paying close attention to our press statement thank you thank you everyone all right thank you group four um, first and foremost, I'd like to inform participants from group six and eight, kindly share your screen during the judge deliberation itself so that we get to save some time in between. Um, all right, so without further ado, I'd like to locate the next five minutes for the Q&A session from both of our judges, Professor Rubin and Mr. John, as well as participants. Thank you. I'll take turns with John. John, please go ahead first. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Help me understand, like, when uh i'm just curious have you I'm, of course i'm not the expert in this but are you have you studied all the occupational hazards of of having uh someone who's who's pregnant um you know be you know do do the job of, of a stewardess i mean you know like first and foremost the um the safety of the mother and the child are of utmost importance, right? So have you studied the occupation? I mean, it, it looks, very, it's very creative, that mechanism, but I mean, is this, is this like, is, have you seen the standards of like, uh, uh, you know, in your, uh, in the, I don't know what it's called, the FAA associations and things like that uh, on, on doing that? Um, can I take the floor to answer? Go ahead. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir, for your question. So, uh, okay, in the context of doing a research or an occupational hazard uh, assessment, I would say no, we haven't specifically done for the technology we're implementing. But what we've done is we've created a survey. We have personally interviewed with a current uh, stewardess right now. Um, we interviewed a MES stewardess, and she said that she herself got to be working on the flight after her fifth month. But this is, of course, after consulting her doctor, whether she's healthy enough to do so. And um, from the fifth month onwards, the sixth month is a bit risky. It's up to the uh, employee, of course, if she would like to still work, but she took the leave from the six months onwards. But after her fifth month, it's apparently safe for students to work up in the flights. Mm. Okay, so so what what's your plan um, for, what does the stewardess, what's the plan for the stewardess? Uh, let's say that she, she, you know, she decides not to, to work, uh, you know, in the air after the fifth month, mm -hmm. what, but she still wants to be an, uh, an employee. What's she going to do after uh, from the six month onwards? Okay, so in that case, firstly, we will of course tell her if she's planning to take a leave, she can. But if she still like to stay in the company and still work up to the day she has to give birth, we will reallocate her to a more pregnant friendly, uh, friendly, friendly department whereby she can still come to office and maybe do. You know, when you go to the airports, right? They have that checking counters where you sit in and check the boarding passes and all that. Yeah, she might be reallocated to that department until the day she has to give birth. If she's still interested, if she would like to take a leave we will implement a 60% pay cut just to cover up the bonuses for all the overtime um, workers covering per schedule. I mean, so the, the six, how long leave, how many months leave does she have? Um, okay, we, uh, we recommend seven months pregnancy onwards and then 90 months is a mandatory by the health uh, doctors that once you give birth 90 months you have to stay at home but the seven months to nine months really up we're giving it up to the female employees if she would like to be redirected to a department she can if she would like to take a leave she can how much is again how much is the reduction in the in her pay uh, so while she's on leave 60 percent. so she gets 40 percent of her current salary while she's on leave for seven months uh six months yes. sorry six months Okay. Have you worked out the finances for this? Because uh, I can, I mean, this is, of course, these are based on assumptions, but uh, it seems that maybe perhaps one of the reasons why, um, you know, it, this was in the collective bargaining agreement in the first place, it's collective bargaining agreement. It's done by the management and the staff, right? Yes, um, <laughs> have you have you have you have you worked out the costs? Because it seems to me that 
I mean, how I understand it is that, uh, you know, you have a, like some sort of a union or, or some part of your, uh, your own, um, your own income going out to like a certain fee to kind of compensate for these types of situations. Right. And whether you're pregnant or not, you know, it, it's a, it's a collective, uh, part of the, either the, the stewardess association or the union. Right. Have you worked out these finances? I think my chief financial officer, uh, Tumin, are you here? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so because the tax actually is also uh, based on the ticket price. Uh, because almost the flight cost having to cover the sum of the number of factors like the destination, aircraft capacity, and also the load factor. So we assume the tax is also the normal uh, based on our revenue and income for the whole company. Okay. Um, I mean, you still have to compete against other airlines though, right? You, you can't, uh, um, okay. I mean, anyway, that's, that's an issue I have. I'm just wa wanting to know if you've explored that because it seems like there's a lot of system second or third order effects here <laughs> that you may not have thought of. Yes. I think because we did it all based on assumption, uh, so we just uh, assume the numbers and what our revenue would look like, but we didn't really come up with a, I would say an Excel design chart to say how much okay. we have. Okay, sorry, uh, Ruben, do you, Professor Ruben, do you have a, another question? Sorry, I think we're out of time, right? Is yeah. It's okay. okay then, it's okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I think I have similar questions to you as well. Thanks, John. Uh, all right, thank you, Mr. Ruben. Nice seeing you again. Thank you as well. Thank you, Professor Rubin and uh, Mr. John. I'll allocate the next five minutes for judge deliberation. Can I have group six? Can you please um, share, share your screen, please? Thank you.
Okay, I'm good to go. Great, thank you. Um, now I'd like to pass on to group six. Your 10 minutes starts now. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are the representatives of Speed Care Alliance. Before we begin, let me share the content of today's press statement. We will start with the introduction of, to the board of directors, the problem statement, Speed Care Airlines response, amendments and additions to the policy, and end with a short Q&A session. Let me introduce the board of directors of Speed Care Airlines. Our chief executive officer, Ms. Reshna Rimganesan, our chief operational officer, Ms. Lee Shi Yun, our chief financial officer, Ms. Lim Yivon, our chief technical officer, Ms. Afrina Ame, who due to unforeseen circumstances is not able to join us today. And myself, the chief human resource officer, Ahmad Daniel. The problem statement we have identified is as follows. In accordance with Speed Care Airlines policy, pregnant great B stewardesses are pressured to resign or forcefully terminated. Perceived as a symptom of larger inequalities and discrimination, this issue affects the well-being, job security, and the performance of our female employees. This satisfaction towards this unsupportive work environment adversely impacts customer service. Speed Care Alliance is committed to creating ethical, equal, inclusive, and employee-centric policies, decrease productivity due to an unsatisfactory work environment, and low morale will reflect negatively on the company's image and success. Our company policies should embrace positive values and promote gender parity. We believe that every individual is an invaluable asset and their well being is a priority. We regret the oversight with regards to discrimination in our policy. In order to progress with the current needs of today's society, we have addressed the issue that occurred in the company proactively. Ms. Aina, a fellow employee, was one of the victims of our antiquated policy, which encouraged gender bias. The airline manager merely acted in accordance with our policy, and we take collective responsibility for his actions. Speed Care Airlines acknowledges the amendments and additions need to be made to the existing policy. We will revisit Ms. Aina's case, and if the termination is proven unjust, she will be fairly compensated and her services in the company will be reinstated. The company is currently in the process of revising our policy and hope to create a more inclusive and equitable work atmosphere. Speed Care Airlines aims to effect change and become exemplary to other airline companies that gender discrimination will not be condoned. Now, our Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Reshna, will elucidate the policy measures that Speed Care Alliance will adopt. Thank you, Mr. Amadani. Um, good afternoon, members of the press. I would like to recapitulate the words of the company's Chief Human Resource Officer and express my regret for the distress caused to all parties in the situation. As an airline company, our priority is to provide high quality services to our customers and stakeholders without compromising the needs of our female employees. Regrettably, this was not reflected in our company policies. Therefore, Speed Care Airlines will take necessary measures to revise and enhance our policies to reflect inclusivity and equality in the workplace to prevent discrimination. The company recognizes that the original policy was biased towards women, thus permitting the manager to terminate pregnant stewardesses without just cause and excuse. For this reason, the company will look into making the following amendments and additions to our policies. First, resignation of pregnant grade B stewardesses is optional and termination can only be considered if and or when the stewardess has committed major misconduct or has proven to underperform in their duties while pregnant. 
we recognize that work performance is subjective. For pregnant staff, bi-weekly mental, emotional, and physical check-ins by professionals will be conducted and recorded by the airline's HR department. These records will be used to gauge if pregnancy conditions are the source for underperformance. Next, the airline manager is prohibited from victimizing and or pressuring pregnant staff from resigning. For the safety and welfare of all pregnant staff, pregnancy should be disclosed to the airline manager without fear of termination. In addition, airline managers will be given sufficient exposure and be equipped with the expertise to handle conflicts responsibly and empathetically through workshops, trainings, seminars, and modules. An option will be provided for pregnant grade B stewardesses in our policy. They can be temporarily transferred or reassigned to other positions in the airline, for instance, as ground admin staff, after their first trimester of pregnancy, or if they have received written doctor's orders to not fly due to medical reasons. This is the company's approach to exhibit support and empathy for our female staff. The positions offered will be based on availability. Nonetheless, reassignment or transfer will be granted to reassure staff of job security. Temporary transfer or reassignment wages will involve a small percentage deduction from the original salary for the grade B stewardesses. Speed Care Airlines also hopes to support all pregnant staff by initiating a fund to provide monetary support based on their current job position. Since Speed Care Airlines is a private entity, maternity leave will be granted to all of our female staff for 60 consecutive days with full pay. In line with the Employment Act of 1955, if a female employee has been employed for 90 days and has worked for at least one day after her fifth month of pregnancy, she is entitled to 60 days of maternity allowance, even if terminated on grounds of misconduct. Upon grade B stewardesses return from maternity leave, they are given the option to remain as ground admin staff or return as a stewardess. Either option will require our staff to go through a series of assessments to determine that they are fit to resume work. For those who choose to resign during their maternity leave, a written notice at least four weeks prior to the stipulated return date should be forwarded to the airline manager. Lastly, Moving forward, the company will not tolerate gender discrimination and unfair dismissal. All of our staff will undergo due process if they are to be terminated. Speed Care Airlines will be proactive to institute an anti-discrimination policy to protect all of our staff regardless of gender, sexual orientation, race, religion, and ethnicity. We are grateful that this issue was highlighted by our female staff. Speed Care Airlines is committed to adapt and make the proposed amendments and additions with immediate effect in our company's policies to cater to the needs of its dedicated female staff. The company will channel its energy and resources to create a healthy work culture that advocates equality, compassion, empathy, and inclusivity. Gender discrimination in the workplace is an affliction, and we will play our part to eliminate it. To the female staff, have confidence that Speed Care Airlines will always support you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Group 6. Um, I'll open the five minutes allocation to our judges for Q&A. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I just want to find out from you guys, why is it taken so long to address Aina case? Other airlines have had similar issues with the employees and they acted swiftly to kind of reinstate their stewardess uh, employment status, but you guys are still investigating it. Might know why what's taking so long doesn't seem like a priority for you guys, given the length of time you've taken. All right, okay, so I'll take this question first. So the, the reason is because we want to make sure that the policy we implement is according to you know the correct SOPs. We don't want to just because while we know that the manager fired her because she refused to resign, we are aware, but we just want to go through the correct SOPs. It's not that her um, what happened to her 
is something that we do not care about. We do, we care about our employees. We just want to make sure that it is in fact, was uh, that she was pressurized and victimized by our manager. And then we'll carry out the necessary um, measures to make sure that she's fairly compensated and um, will be able to resume her job. It, once again, I would like to reiterate, we are not saying that she does not matter. And, and I understand that it seems like it's taking long, but similar to any company, SOPs need to be followed and we are doing it in due process. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Will this investigation be conducted by some kind of a mediator or Indian pattern party? And second question is, will you also involve some kind of public consultation with your employees regarding the improvement of your policies? So um, I'll be taking the question. So we are going to um, assign um, public um, other company to, to take over this um, investigation or this case, because we want to have uh, the integrity um, the, of this case. So we want to have um, the, the best outcome that, uh, that, that we can have for Ms. Aina. So it's, it's better for us uh, not to do it internal. It's, it's important for us to have, um, uh, to know uh, and to be looked in by the company. Uh, but the, how do I say it? But the assessment would be uh, provided by the, uh, by the other company to assess um, this case, to make it uh, more integrity, to ensure the integrity of this Case. So yeah. Yeah. So for the policies, will you carry out a public consultation, or just gonna do it in house to improve the policies? Uh, um, firstly, we're gonna do it um, in house, just in house, because it's a it's a it's a uh, um, it's a mandate uh, policy. It's our our policy, the company's policy itself. So we cannot make it uh, public unless we have. Um, unless it's proven that it could work, that it can work uh, in our company. Because um, we are, um, how do I say it? Huh? Um, we are approaching, we want to be the company that um, set an example to other companies to follow that discrimination is not good. It's not good for the company. So we want to be the example. Just, um, um before we can make it public, we need to, um, we need to. Um, sorry, I mean, I mean within your company, not outside. The Republic is in within your company. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, if I could just add to that, I, um, basically, I guess what our CHR was saying is that yes, it's a work in progress right now. The policy. So once we get the policy and you know um, structure it in the appropriate manner, then we will definitely open it to the, um, the public in term, uh, internally exact, um, of our company and inform all staff of the current amendments and additions. All right, thank but you. But of course, we have to work on it internally first. Thank you. Yeah. After you, John. Rashna, can I ask you, can I ask you to, to go back a few slides to the policy recommendation? I'll try yeah, to make sure. it quick. Okay. okay, wait, wait, right here. Uh, go to the next one. Oh, hey, stay here, stay here. Next one. Okay, go back. <laughs> you say that you're going to support staff by initiating a fund to provide monetary support. Where does this, where does this money come from? Um, so the money will definitely come from the small, the percentage deduction of the grade B stewardesses first. And then until we manage to secure great beast stewardesses, great beast stewardesses has agreed to this already that you'll get money from their income. Like I said, this is a work in progress policy. And once we've determined this and once we explain it to the staff, if there are concerns, then we will go on with the further okay. amendments. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'll allocate the next five minutes to our judges for deliberation. Group eight, kindly share your mm -hmm. slide, please.
All right, thank you. You're done. All right. All right. Thanks, Professor Rubin and Mr. John. Um, all right, I'd like to invite the representative for our final group to start your presentation. Your 10 minutes starts now. Hi, and a very good evening. I am Aliha. I'm the CEO of Speedcare Airline. And in this conference today, I have my CFO, COO, CHRO, and CTO. Ladies and gentlemen, in today's press conference, I'll be addressing the problem that has arisen in our company, which are the gender inequality issue, the breach of collective agreement, and poor work performance. Recently, it is came to our attention that one of our employees has been terminated as she has breached the collective agreement to resign if they are found pregnant. Due to the termination, we found that all the female workers' work performance has reduced terribly. This issue has brought our attention and we, the board of directors, are working together to solve this issue. Speedcare Airline is a company that values inclusivity, empathy, and sustainability. We value each and every employees that we have in Speedcare Airline. This incident is a reminder that we, as one company, as one soul, should accelerate the transformation towards a betterment of our airline company, catering to both men and women as fair as we could. As suggested by 193 member countries of the United Nations, 17 Sustainable Development Goals have been proposed in which we decided to focus on goal number five. Goal number five focus on gender equality and set the ambitious target of achieving gender equality and empowering women everywhere by 2030. Although women make up 39% of global employment, they are accounted for 54% of overall job losses as of May 2020. In a survey conducted in 2018, 96% of women having children affected mother's career for the worse. This is multifaceted problem requiring a change in attitude and culture as well as legislation, but stronger legal protection is a very welcome first step. Reviewing the policy of speed care align, after a thorough discussion with the stakeholders and senior management, we would like to introduce and improvise the policy in a fulfillment towards one of the 17 sustainable development goals. How can we ensure that the role of women in the workplace and in the society is central to efforts to rebuild economies and that women do not fall further behind? Discrimination and unlawful termination of pregnant workers remain pervasive practice around the world. We in Speedcare Airline are exploring family-friendly policies, including offering flexible and temporary positions to support pregnant female attendants by offering them suitable ground positions. This could provide as the management authority in rethinking their employees' performance reviews and professional development. We will also provide the pregnant woman maternity leave. This policy allows them to maintain their health insurance and seek leave benefits while sustaining their seniority. In the end of their pregnancy term, our stewardess are required to undergo a few process in order to ensure that they are up to our company's service and expectations. We will use this moment to design and put in place policies and practice that can support women in the long term. It is short-sighted for us to lose talented women in Speedcare Airline who have built up skills and expectations just because of unwillingness to support them on maternity leave and on return to work. According to Pregnancy Discrimination Act, the federal laws prohibit pregnancy discrimination and provide for disability and parenting leave are Title VII of Civil Rights Act of 1964. Title VII covers many forms of discrimination you may counter, especially about hiring, firing, work assignment, work conditions, promotions, benefits, training, retirement policies, and wages. These pregnancy discrimination acts to protect pregnant women in the workplace. The law made it legal for employers to consider pregnancy in decisions about hiring, firing, and even promotion. In our situation, one of our employees was dismissed because she was pregnant. A person can only say this contractual term is fair if people take the view that if men were to become pregnant, they too will be dismissed under this contractual term. Therefore, as the term then would apply to both men and women, it is not discriminatory. Here, women are punished, dismissed from the appointment when they become pregnant. Thus, we have breached the theory of equality. In other words, we have discriminated against women. As a matter of public policy, we must support women fulfilling this function of giving birth. Women cannot be put in a position of having to choose between earning a living and becoming pregnant. 
Therefore, as a matter of public policy, we must provide every facility to assist women who are pregnant. Also, we have spoken to all our stakeholders to, to ensure that we are all aligned regarding this issue. Now, I would like to invite Sophia, my CHRO, or Speed KL and Company, to address the welfare of our employees. So on top of the key issue that mentioned by the CEO, so I will highlight that one of the reasons that we want to improvise the current policy is that we really care for our welfare of the employees. So for the example of Aina incidents, it shows that um, her rights are not quite for. That's why that we want to make sure that the other employees will not face the same problem. Because there are some of our employees who are the single mothers, unmarried young women, they need to support their family financially. So imagine that if we terminate them from their position, definitely they will have a problem to support their family financially. So uh, therefore that for our initial policy, we are aware that there are some of our employees are not really happy with us. So in order to address this issue is that we will have a face-to-face -face discussion with the involved employees. So the reason why we want to have a personal discussion with these employees is that we believe that by having a face-to-face -face discussion, we can hear their inputs, we can hear their situation and understand their situation better because we want to show that we are not being defensive of our current policy. We are willing to change our or improvise our policy for the best of our employees. So the reason for the discussion, because we do not want our employees to be affected in terms of their job productivity, following the sample of the case of 1965 to 1970 of the Lalo grape strike and boycott, which is happening between the Filipino and American worker, because those employees' strike is due to the company are not addressing the issue properly. So on top of that, so definitely there are some employees will spread this issue on the social media as well. So in order to maintain our company reputation to the public, we will address this issue by having my team to prepare a comprehensive response to address this issue. Because why do we emphasize also on the social media presence is that there are some company before this, for example, Chick Fil A, a fast food company, whereby they face a backlash of the employees' gay rights, LGBTQ are not addressed properly or are not supported by the company. So when the company they do not address the issue on the social media, this can affect their company's reputation. So these are the one of the ways that how we can address this issue. Then I will pass on to my CEO team to conclude the remarks. While legal prohibitions alone may not eliminate discrimination, they could, pro they could provide a stepping stone to a fairer and safer working environment for both men and women. Reforms ensuring equality are important more than ever, especially after the pandemic's devastating effect on working women. Together with legal enforcement and increased awareness around these unfair practices, changes in the law can greatly contribute to making gender equality a reality all over the world. On behalf of Speed Care Align, I would like to thank you for your continuous and tremendous support towards Speed Care Align. Thank you. All right. Thank you. To our final group, um, I will open the next five minutes to our judges and participants for the Q&A session. Uh, Professor Ruben, you, you can start this time if you want. <laughs> okay, I thought that was going it. Just now, go ahead. <laughs> Okay. Uh, can I see uh, group eights? Can I see your your recommended solution slide again? Um, sorry, sir. Would you like uh, the second question, second solutions for the second question or the first one? Uh, let's go to. Let's start with the first again. Okay. All right. This is for the oh. first one. Okay, so the steward eliminate section of terminating pregnant. Okay, you will eliminate that section of the CBA, right? Yes. And then the stewardess will be granted a suitable ground position. Okay, you require maternity leave for stewardesses fit to perform their duties. Can you explain this one? Requ you require maternity leave for stewardesses who are fit to perform their duties? Okay. Uh, 
will the CEO take this question or shall I take it? You can answer it one in medical perspective. Okay, so basically, um, this is what we would suggest uh, to our uh, pregnant air stewardesses um, because, um, of course, the safety of the mother and the child is of utmost importance. So uh, requiring here is suggesting the maternity, maternity leave to them. Is that oh. what is being questioned? Wait, wait, but you, j sorry, I thought they will be, um, okay, so <laughs> when, when are they gonna be put on, when will they be grounded? Like which, at their second trimester, after their second trimester? That's what I'm confused in here. Um, okay. So um, most of the research and uh, medical papers have shown that uh, it is safe to sort of prohibit uh, the mothers from flying at about an age or at, at about the weeks, the pregnancy weeks of uh, 28 weeks. Uh, actually, it's even safer to allow the mother to travel uh, or to have uh, aviation careers uh, at, the, at, the, at, a, at, a, at a sort of age of yeah, weeks. sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Fava. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I think I kind of understand that, but uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to figure out here, I feel like the language here is not precise enough. Um, you are saying that they're, they'll be granted a suitable ground position. So if I'm not mistaken, even if they're in their seventh to ninth month, someone in their seventh month is still able to to, to you know, if they're on the ground, they're still able to do their job, aren't they? Yes. So, uh, so you're talking about the ones in the air. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh, they are. There are two different suggestions actually. So they can either pick up ground positions until they think they are not fit to proceed with the the sort of uh, jobs, and they need a maternity leave for, uh, say, close to their delivery, close to the delivery of their child then they can sort of take um, weeks, however much weeks of uh, leave that they want. Or if uh, they are flying and they don't want any ground position, uh, then they can take mm. uh, maternity leave from the okay. second trimester itself. Okay. I th okay. okay, I think, yeah, that just needs to be worked out. Um, okay, refresh your course, what's that for? Okay, so um, basically, uh, as the CEO, Chief Operating Officer, I guess I'll take this question. So uh, for the refresher course, it's actually like um, we have to see how uh, as, as to where this is and how the job, uh, it started off, what is their origin in the first place? Uh, back in 1930s, when they started recruiting female as to where this it was because uh, they had this sort of uh, females were known to have this motherly nature. Of course, they are mothers. So by nature, they have this... Um, uh, capacity to nurture and care. So that is why they started taking in female air stewardesses. And uh, at the very early stages, they were even required to know nursing. So um, what I'm trying to get at here is that uh, to be an air stewardess is not a simple task. There are a few skills that you need to cover. So what this okay. refresher course okay. is... Okay, oh, uh, sorry, Thalva, that's clear. Oh, yeah. I, I think I get it now. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, sorry. I was going to ask you that. Okay, okay. Okay. The time is up for Q and A. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. John and Professor Ruben. I'll allocate the next five minutes for Dutch deliberation. Thank you. Is it possible now for everyone to leave while we deliberate with John, or do you want um, everybody to stay here? Actually, we would need everyone to stay right after the judge celebration because we're going to take a group picture. Then I'll all right, send all right. you guys back to the meeting. Okay, we'll do that first and then John and I discuss privately in the Definitely, we can do that. Um, Faris, I'm going to need help from you to take a group picture. Yep, very well. Can the person sharing the screen uh, turn off sharing you... right now? Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, I have a question. Um, hmm. uh, will... We have a chance to, uh, after we deliberate, uh, then we won't see ever see you again. Or, or what's how? What's the format? Yeah. So basically, right after this session, all of us would have to return back to the main session because we have the closing keynote speaker. By the okay. uh, will be delivering his speech. Right. I believe you wouldn't be able to see the participants. We'll move on straight with the event. Okay. Uh, 
well, maybe I'll just give like some last remarks for everyone. Yeah. Sure, uh, sure, why not? Yeah, since, so first of all, thank you so much, guys. I, this is not an easy task. Uh, I know everyone worked really, really hard on this. Uh, I'm sorry, like also if I asked quite pointed questions, uh, but you know, this is, I guess it's good practice for the real world. Um, I guess some of the things I like, some of the more practical uh, kind of advice I can give is when you're faced with a challenge like this, you have to also, you have to kind of think, uh, first of all, you want to, you want to, you want to uh, de-escalate the, the, the tensions and the emotions from it. So I, I liked the groups that were able to address the, I mean, really kind of speak to the, the affected groups like directly, at least they, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't think that should be the whole thing, but I mean, you know, on a kind of a more emotional level because there's very practical reasons probably, even though it, it seems unfair, but you know, uh, it's a collective bargaining agreement, right? I mean, actually, they agreed to that, uh, technically speaking, right? So, but you know, it was probably unfair, uh, and then you just need to de-escalate the tension. So I like that, but you have to also see what is. Look at try to see what where you want to go with this at the end goal. Um, you only you want to see, you want to understand like, and then when you when you see that end goal, you have to see okay. Where, what are the implications and who are, who is going to be affected? Of course, the number one person is that, is the B group people, right? You want to kind of, you want to, you want to placate them. Uh, you want to make sure that they're at least uh, minimally satisfied or hopefully more than that, right? And then once you're able to understand what that is, then see, okay, the stakeholders involved, uh, CFO or HR, what are the, implications if we agree if we solve that issue um and then that's that's where like the tricky part comes in because i, I know you guys are probably not subject matter experts in this industry or the these policies but you have but you know you have to think of that and then another thing i i would say is know when to apologize know the things that you have to for sure apologize for but then also be careful when you do apologize because sometimes you may be apologizing. It can, there's also some legal implications there. You've already admitted you're a super mistake. So be very precise on what you're apologizing for. Um, and, and then if you don't know an answer, you have to, uh, if it's reasonable for you not to know it, I mean, first of all, you should know the, the stuff that's obvious, but you should, if it's reasonable, to uh for you to if, if it's maybe if it's understandable that you don't know yet then you should just admit that you don't know yet and you need to explore that uh so so anyway that's my advice sorry i, I took a quite a long time to give those closing remarks but <laughs> ruben do you want to say any yeah any again john I agree that i echo your sentiments and i want to congratulate all of you uh yeah. for putting in so much hard work and very very creative with the solutions and i just also want to Again, highlight three things that John also alluded to. Number one, yeah, de-escalate the issue, the problem. And I think most of you, in fact, all of you admitted uh, the issue and apologized. And again, as John mentioned, it's hard to apologizing, right? But yeah, I think that's the first thing you should do and then present the long, short-term and long-term uh, solutions, which I think yeah, most of you had. And I mean, just for aesthetics-wise, I hope some of, most of you in, um, in the future, when you give presentations, also try to minimize your the words on your on your presentations. Keep it with three things. You know, Steve Jobs' principle of three. You always like to get people to just take home three key messages. I think some, most of you did that. And again, as John mentioned, you know, if you're not sure with questions, again, we try to be as uh, brutal as possible. But potentially from the media, we ask you some sharp questions. But if you're not sure about them, yeah, just admit. Okay, we need to you know, break the. Break, we need to huddle and discuss this as a team, you know, avoid giving the solutions on the spot, which you're not sure of because there are implications, right? Once you say something wrong and that might get you in trouble. So yeah, if you're not sure about, about certain issues, just admit it and say, yeah, we'll get back to you on that. And uh, yeah, so these are the three things I just want to highlight. And again, really hearty congratulations to you all. I'm, I'm really, uh, I learned a lot, to be honest, again, yeah. from this case study. I think it was also very eye -open, an eye-opener for me and John and, and I'm glad to be part of this uh, camp and hopefully see you all sometime down the road as future leaders. Again, congratulations and take care, stay safe.
Thank you. Thank you, Professor Rubin and Mr. John Lin. Uh, thank you for sharing with our participants wonderful uh, long and short term policies as well as reasonable policies. Um, so without further ado, I'd like everyone to please turn on your camera. Hong Min and one thing I'll need you to turn on your camera. Faris is going to help us to take a group photo. One thing, are you there? All right, okay. And Hong Min, can you turn on your camera, please? All right, I guess Faris, you can move ahead this. All right, smile, everyone. Three, two, one. Got it. All right. Thank you. Once again, I'd like to thank Professor Rubin and John for allocating your time um, with us for this weekend. Um, if you have yeah, participants, if you have any questions, feel free to approach Professor Rubin and Mr. John. I believe they can give you wonderful insights about, you know, about efficient competition as well as advice on sustainable leadership as a whole. So since we do have a few more minutes before two, do you guys have any questions for our judges before I return you back to the uh, main session? Going once, going twice. Okay, keep in oh. touch guys, yeah. All right, I believe no questions. Well, I'll see all of you guys in the main session then. You guys can kindly leave the room. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> okay.